take your Bibles with me this morning and go to the book of Jude, the book of Jude, one chapter in the book of Jude. If you get to the book of Revelation, you've gone too far. It's right before the book of Revelation, so Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath preserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominions, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and have ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Corinth. These are spots in your feast of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion making a difference, and others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace this morning. Father, I ask that you would anoint this preacher this morning. Father, I pray that you'd give me the words to say. Father, I know that 
this day might be viewed by some as an emotional day. And by others, it could be a joyous day as well. Father, however people are viewing this day, may our hearts for this next few moments be focused and situated around the Word of God. Yeah. Father, may the Spirit of God speak to us. May the Spirit of God convict us. May the Spirit of God challenge us from the Word today. But God, most importantly, may the Spirit of God change us today. So that when we leave this place, we're not the same as when we entered in through the doors. Mm -hmm. Father, may the Spirit of God lead and guide and direct. And Father, we'll give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory for what you'll do over the next few moments together. For it's in my name we pray. Amen. 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 We know that the book of Jude is written primarily to the brother of James, but it's also written to you and I as the Christian. Because verse number one, we are told that this passage is written to those that are sanctified, those that are preserved in Jesus Christ. Those who have been called according to the purpose of Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful today to have been sanctified. I'm thankful this morning to know that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. I stand before you this morning knowing that my name has been recorded in heaven. And one of these days I'm going to enter into heaven. And I pray that you know that as well, that you are kept in the hand of Almighty God this morning. But as Jude is writing here, and we're getting a glimpse into this passage this morning, I believe that there are some duties that have been given to you and I as God's people. Some things that are needed in the day and time in which we live in. And as you begin to look at the book of Jude, you'll find out that the Holy Spirit of God is dealing and is prompting the Christian to conduct themselves in such a way because in the book of Jude, there is a contrast of opposing lifestyles. There is the Christian who is faithful to serve God, but then that beginning in verse number 8, you begin to look at those who have fallen into apostasy, those that have turned their back on God, those that want nothing to do with the, the church. They want nothing to do with godly influences in their life. They've become filthy, the Bible says. They've defiled the flesh. They despise dominion. They speak evil of the dignities. They are following after the God of this world. They're following after Satan himself. I'm tired of seeing Satan destroy Christians. I'm Man. tired of seeing Satan destroy churches. I'm tired Man. of seeing Satan destroy our, our nation. I'm just tired of seeing Satan destroy homes. I'm tired of seeing Satan win the victory when the victory has been given to the Christian. When the Amen. victory has been given to God. I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians giving in to the devil. Amen. Amen. I believe there's a duty for you and I this morning. And in verse number three, we see that duty. The duty is for you and I to contend. It's for you and I to fight. It's for you and I to stand on guard, ready to face the attacks of yeah. Satan as he comes our way. Yeah. The Bible says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you. But he's saying, I, I exhort you, I encourage you, I plead with you, I, I beg of you, church, I beg of you, Christian, don't give in, don't give up, keep fighting, keep yeah. contending for Amen. Keep fighting for what you believe in. Amen. Hey, we know what we believe in today from the Word of God. And I'm not going to give up. Let's keep fighting for what we believe in. Amen. Amen. We need to fight for what we believe in. Fight for what's true today. Amen. The Apostle Paul said this in 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verse number 12. As he's closing out 
his life. He's writing to Timothy, that young man, that young man in the in the ministry that the apostle Paul had personally invested time in. He says, Timothy, he says, I've looked back over my life. I realize that I've made some mistakes, but here's something that I've done, and I encourage you, Timothy, to keep doing the same thing. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Amen. Fight for what you believe in. Fight for the faith of God. Oh, I'm reminded today that you and I are in a spiritual war. Mm -hmm. We're in a spiritual battle. The battle is not with flesh and blood. But it's against the principalities of this old world. Yeah. It's against Satan himself. It's against those angels that fell with him that we saw in verse number 6 of Jude where, the, where Jude says, And the angels which kept not their first estate. Hey, the angels were created for God. They were created to worship Him, but they failed in doing that very thing. And oftentimes we look at our lives and think, well, I could never turn my back on God. Hey, the angels who were created by God to worship right. Him did that very thing. Right. And if they can do it, then I can attest that I can fall too. Mm -hmm. And that you could fall prey to that very thing of turning our back on God, giving in and not fighting. But He said, they left their first estate. They they left their own habitations, and he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Oh, I'm reminded today that we're in a spiritual battle. Over in the book of Philippians, the Bible tells us to stand with the armor of God on. You know, when I look at the armor of God, you begin to examine every piece of armor. You notice what is not covered is your back. You know why that is? It's because God doesn't intend for us to duck tail, turn and run. Amen. He wants us to keep going forward. Keep moving forward. Keep pressing. He doesn't want the devil moving in on us. We're to advance on the devil. We're to advance on Satan. Amen. We're to keep pushing him back. Keep Amen. pushing him out. Keep getting rid of him. Hey, he's pushing into our churches. He's pushing into families. He's pushing into homes. He's pushing into our government. It's time that we as God's people stand up and contend for what we believe in. I still believe in this old book. I still believe that God's way is the correct way. And I will not compromise that. And I want to contend. I want to fight for the faith. Man. Man. Paul says fight the good fight. Hey, it's a good fight. The, the spiritual fight is a good fight Amen. that we're involved in. Man. We don't have to get discouraged. We don't have to get beat down by the fight. You may say, well, preacher, I've lost some battles. That's okay. So have I. But ultimately, when I look back at the end of the book, I know who wins. Man. I may have lost a battle, but I know who wins the war. Amen. I know who has the victory. And it's Jesus Christ is going to one of these days pronounce judgment upon Satan and he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Right now. Amen. Oh, what a day that's going to be. As Satan is cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. Oh, contend for the faith. Paul continues to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. He says this, I have fought a good, I have fought a good fight I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Let me ask you, Christian. If your life was to end right now, what would people say about your Christian life? What would be said of you? Could a preacher stand behind your casket and say, oh, so-and-so, they fought the Christian life. They fought a good fight. They kept the faith. Mm. They didn't give in. They didn't give up. Oh, they kept serving God. They kept living for God. They contended for the faith. They contended for what they believe in. There are things worth fighting for today. I'm reminded that fighting for my faith is a good thing. 
But there's another thing that I'm not going to quit fighting for, and that's my family. Amen. This passage says here, contend for the faith. Fight for the faith. But I'm reminded in the day and time in which we live in, there's one thing that I think Satan is attacking more so than anything, and that's the family unit. Right. Right. He's trying to destroy the family. He's trying to get the family out of whack. Kids are at odds with parents. Parents at odds with kids. Uh, mom and dad at odds with one another. Siblings at odds with one another. Trying to destroy the family unit. Yeah. Let me just ask it this way. Any of you have family members that you don't talk to? Because they don't want to, they won't talk to you? I've got a brother in law who I haven't talked to in two years. I last saw him at my father in law's funeral. And now, when I try to call him, I get this message. I don't know if I'm blocked. I don't know what is going on. But I get this message on his voicemail that says this. It doesn't ring. It just goes straight to a voicemail. And it says the number you are trying to contact is not accepting calls from you at this moment. I don't know what I've done. Don't know what we've done. But what I do know is I'm tired of seeing families destroyed. Amen. I'm tired of seeing marriages torn apart. Even as a Christian, there are times that we've gone through some heartaches. Those of you that are married, can you attest? Amen. There's been some bumps in the road of your marriage. Been some rocky times go on. How do you get through them? Well, I can attest and I can promise you, I didn't get through the last 18 years, 17 years, going on 18 this next year of marriage, because I'm such a good person. <laughs> she didn't get by it because she's such a good person. You know, the only reason why you can get through it is... Jesus Christ Amen. and the help of God. Amen. Having a relationship, building it around Him. You ever leave God out of the picture? That's where Satan gets in. Right. Satan wants to destroy. See, that's why he's destroying the churches because so many, I think, churches have cast God out. Amen. We don't need you. We can do our own thing. We can, man, we, we compromise. We'll do this and we can build a church. I don't want to build a church for the sake of numbers. I want a church that's solid. Amen. Fight the good fight Amen. of faith. Amen. Contend for the faith. It's worth fighting for, Christian. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't say that there's no use. Keep fighting. Fight for your faith. Fight for your family. And, and when I think about that fighting for the family, I'm talking on, on, on a couple of different levels here. Because I think you ought to fight for your church family as well. Amen. And prevent making sure that nothing ungodly would come in. Nothing wrong would come in. Notice what is said here, though. That there are times when those would come in. Look at verse number 4 of Jude. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, not everybody that claims to be a Christian is a Christian. That's right. That's right. I would attest that this morning, and I'm going to go out on a limb by saying this, but I would say in probably most churches, there's a lot of people just playing the part of Christian. Yeah. Mm hmm Deep down, they're really not saved. Amen. They're really not Amen. born again. They really don't have Jesus Christ living within in their hearts. They're just playing the game. They're putting on a facade, if you would. Not everybody wants to see the church flourish. There are those that could just as well see it destroyed and put in the ground, put under. 
Guard yourself, church. Watch out for that. It may not even be from the outside in. It could be from the inside out. Right. People that don't have the best interests of the church in mind. Guard yourselves. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old to this condemnation. They're ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you, church. Fight. Fight. Keep fighting. Don't give in. Keep fighting. Every day, when you wake up, put the armor of God on. Amen. Take the armor of God. Adorn yourself with it. And go out and fight the battle. Fight against Satan. Fight against the oppressors of evil. Fight against those that don't have the same mindsets that you do. Hey, I, I'm reminded that the Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. I think as churches, we're going to start facing some perilous times. Amen. Coming. Amen. I saw an article the other day that was sent to me. It might have even been sent by Brother Ron. I don't remember. But there was a there's churches up in Canada right now that are being shut down by the government because they wanted churches to shut down. Churches wouldn't do it. And now the government's coming in and imposing taxes upon them and trying to shut them down. We might actually face that here in our own nation. That's right. Point. That's right. My question is, what are we going to do? Are we going to cower to the government and say, well, I guess I need to shut down the church so I don't face any hardship, so I'm not put in prison? So, or are we going to say, no, I have a responsibility to keep the doors of the church house open? Keep serving God. Keep living for God. Amen. See, contend for the faith. Notice secondly in verse number 14 and 15. Not only do we need to contend, we need to convince people as well. Notice what it said. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, now notice this, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. I believe we live in a day and time where we need to convince the wrongdoers. Right. We need to convince those that are living wayward, that are living against the Word of God. One of the hardest things that I have determined in my ministry is to get people to realize that they're a sinner. You talk to people. Are you saved? Yeah, I go to church. Okay. Maybe you've heard this one. This one's always tickled me. Yeah, I was baptized when I was a, when I was six. Yeah. What's baptism got to do with salvation? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I hear that all the time. Uh, you know, knock on the door. You ever been saved? Yeah, I was baptized. <laughs> okay. You know, I, you begin to realize that there's some wrong thought patterns going on. Those people are hard to convince because so uh, maybe many of them have been so steeped in religion that they're, they, they feel somewhat safe. Let me just say this, that being a Baptist isn't what saves you. Being a Pentecost is, Pentecostal is not what saves you. Right. Being a Methodist is not what saves you. Being Catholic is not what saves you. Being uh, anything other religion is not what saves you. What right. saves you is you and I putting our faith and trust into the work of God on the Amen. cross of Calvary Amen. to bring about salvation. Amen. I believe that all religions can be saved if they will, but they have to do it the way that the Bible says, and they have to go through Jesus Christ. Amen. Because Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In John chapter 14, verse number 6, we must convince those today that they're lost and that they're living contrary to the Word of God. Right. Oftentimes, preachers become, get this reputation of being hard-nosed, being hateful, being 
not caring, not compassionate, because we get down and preach on sin. If you feel that I'm a hard nose, that I'm hateful because I preach on sin, I'm sorry because that's not my intention. But I do believe that a preacher worth his grain and worth his salt ought to preach the whole counsel of God. Amen. Amen. The good, the bad, and the ugly. That's right. That's right. Amen. There's a lot in this Bible that's good. And I love preaching on the grace of God. I love preaching on the goodness of God. I love preaching on the love of God. That bad, though, I mean, you know, I don't like to preach on hell. Because hell's a bad place. But we must preach on hell. Amen. And then that ugly. When I start to get down where we're living. When we start talking about gossip. When we start talking about things where we're living. Church attendance. Tithing. Those are the things that people consider as ugly. You know, the reason why they do that is because I believe the Holy Spirit is convicting inside. Right. The Holy Spirit's doing something in their life. But convincing, convincing people that, hey, if, if, if the Word of God says this and you're not doing that, then we're the ones in the wrong, not the Bible. Right. The Bible's never in the wrong. We are. Yeah. If we could just grasp that mentality, that mindset that, hey, when my life doesn't match up with the Word of God, then I'm out of line, not the Bible. Yeah. The preacher's not out of line for preaching, and I'm out of line because I don't live it. I don't do it. Titus chapter number 1, verse number 9. The Bible says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You know how we convince people? I don't convince them by my thought pattern, nor do you convince them by your thought pattern. I don't convince them by my theology. I convince them by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. This is the sound doctrine. Amen. This is truth. This is right. And so as long as I will take people, you will take people back to this book. When somebody tells you, oh, I'm a good person, you take them to Romans 3.23 where the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse number 10 tells us, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Not one of us are good. We cannot. We're not good enough to earn our way into heaven. Oh, I grew up in a preacher's home. I've grown up in church my whole life. But that doesn't make me a good person. That's right. I was just as much a sinner even growing up in a preacher's home as if I would have not grown up in a preacher's home. Because mm -hmm. I was born into sin. I had that sin nature in my life. Many of you may have that same testimony. Well, you grew up in church your whole life. You were like me. You were a drug addict. Your parents drug you to church. They drug you to visitation. They drug you to revivals. You didn't get a choice. You had to be there. Amen. You know? And if you tried to defy it, there was a thing called a belt or a switch that you got, and they motivated you to go. Some of you are saying amen because you know what I'm talking about. You've been there. Amen. You went through that same things. You know? Parents had a way to convince you. To go to church. To be a faithful. That's right. You know? But yet, as a Christian, we ought to just be convincible <coughs> if God says to do it, we ought to do it. No arguments. Convince the gainsayer. Second Timothy 4 2 says this preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The preaching of God's word is not a bad thing. I love being able to preach the word of God. Amen. To stand and preach, thus saith the Lord. Do I upset people with it? Absolutely. Because I've heard stories since I've been here in the two and a half years from church members. I don't like him. You might like a preacher if you'd come more. Amen. <laughs> Acts chapter 20, verse 27 says this. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all 
the counsel of God. I guarantee you, you fall in love with people if you spend time with them. Right. You're around them. You become faithful. You find out that your preacher is really not a bad guy. He loves you. He cares about you. You may not think it, but he does. I wouldn't spend hours on end throughout my week studying and getting fed from the Word of God if I did it. Amen. Amen. Brother Keenan understands that. Brother Logan understands that. Because, you know, the times that I spend in my office studying, that's time that I'm not spending with my family. That I'm sacrificing. But I do that because I love people. And I want to see them grow. I want to see them become closer to God. Amen. Oh, but see, we put up these facades that we're fine. I, I think we're living in a day and time where complacency is taking over. Right. Where we're just happy with where we're at. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to do more. I'm good. I'm okay. Or I'm at. Convince. Contend for the faith. Convince people. And then notice verse 23. Verse 22. Actually, verse 21 will sum it up. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Christian, let me encourage you. Keep yourself in God's love. Amen. Never turn your back on your first love. Keep, re remain true to God. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Verse 22. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Some people just need compassion. Right. They need to see that we love them. About 10 years ago, we uh, stood before a judge in an adoption process that we were going through with the boys. The judge looked over at us across from the counter. This was, you know, back before COVID, so they didn't have the plastic screens up at that time. <laughs> but she looked at us that day and said, Eddie, Barbie, let me tell you something that I believe these young boys need. She made this statement to us. And I've never forgot it. She said, what, they, what these boys need is they need somebody to love them. They need somebody to love them. She could have said a lot of other things. They need discipline. Heaven, heaven, Lord knows they need that. <laughs> and they get it quite often. But you know what we really just all need is love. Right. We just need love. We've been shown love by God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Of some have compassion, making a difference. See, not everybody needs what, Timothy, what Paul tells Timothy. Sometimes people need to be reproved. Sometimes people need to be rebuked. But sometimes people just need to be loved. They just need to be encouraged. Hey, and as a preacher's preaching, to me this has probably got to be one of the most difficult things that there is to do. Because as a preacher is preaching... He is having to try to get the message that God has given to him to apply to all people that are sitting in the auditorium. Not everybody's at the same spiritual level in a church. There are some who, on a spiritual level, would probably still be considered as a baby in Christ. But then you got those senior saints, those that have been saved for years, have really grown in the, the knowledge of God. They're, I mean, you know, when it comes to, to church, they never miss. They do everything right. You know, a pastor has to try to hit all people the same way. Somebody that's sitting there, they may need the reproving of the Word of God. 
Another one may be lost in sin, needs the rebuking from God's word. Somebody else just needs some encouragement mm -hmm. Amen. to keep going. Did you know that God can use the same message and accomplish that very task? Right. Years ago, sitting underneath the, the preaching of my dad, my dad was preaching a message on gossip. And I, I think is what he was preaching on. The invitation time came around. This little girl stepped up from back in the back, made her way down the aisle, came to the front, took my dad by the hand, and said this to him. She said, Brother Claude, I need to be saved. He hadn't said a word that whole morning about salvation. He's preaching on gossip because there was an issue of that going on in the church. And so he was addressing it from Scripture. But under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that young girl realized she was lost and needed to get saved. Amen. God can do things that we can't even imagine. That's right. The Bible says that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Hey, when a preacher stands here and he'll preach the Word of God, it might come across as, as hard to some people. It might come across as cold to other people. But then there are going to be some that will see that and they'll say, man, he's compassionate. Mm -hmm. He cares for my soul. Yeah. He cares for me. He, 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 he's doing what God has asked of him to do. You might say, well, preacher, how do I view that? I don't know. That's up to you how you view a message. Amen. It really depends on your relationship to God. Where are you at in your own life spiritually? Mm -hmm. See, the ones that have an issue with a relationship with God on a one-on-one, -on -one, they're usually the ones that will hear a message and be like, well, I don't know who he is to tell me that. Come on. They see it as cold. They see it as hard. But the ones that have a Bible study on their own, I mean, they spend time in prayer. They love the church. They love God. They want to make sure that they're living right. Those are usually the ones that when they sit through the same message, they're like, man, preacher, thank you for giving us that. Amen, amen. I'll get standing back there at the door from time to time, and some people will walk out, and they'll just give me a holy grunt. Good to see you today. <laughs> You know where that you know how they felt. And then others will be like, preacher, that's the best message I've ever heard. You put you apparently weren't listening very well. You know? Different people. But see, the Holy Spirit is able to take and motivate and mold the message so that it can accomplish what he wants it to accomplish. He God Himself says that His Word, as it goes forth will not return void unto him, but will accomplish that which he desires for it to accomplish. Hey, I can tell by seeing some of your faces today that you, you're already, you're, you're under the impression of the coldness and the callousness to the preaching of the Word of God. Some of you, though, you've got a smile on your face, and you know what I'm telling you is the truth this morning. Amen. Amen. Paul said this, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Hey, we just need more preachers to just stand up and preach it like it is. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> preach the word of God. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. Be compassionate. 1 Peter 3 8 says this Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, be of one mind, be of one mind. That's where the issue lies. That's what's hard to do, is to get a bunch of different people to be of one mind. You know how we can do that? Through God. Philippians tells it this way, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. You want to be of one mind? Look at the mind of God. Look at the mind of Jesus Christ from Scripture. 
and then let this mind be in you. Christian, you have a duty this year. You have a duty today. Contend for the faith. Fight for the faith. Fight for your family. Amen. Fight for your personal family. Fight for the church family. Guard it. Make sure nothing comes in to destroy the family of God. Convince the gainsayer. Convince the wrongdoer. Convince the wayward that they're wayward. Get them to realize that they're wayward and then invite them to come back. I'm so grateful this morning that we serve a God who is a God of a second chance. Amen. And the third chance. Amen. And the fourth Amen. chance. And the fifth chance. And the sixth chance and seventh and however long he desires to allow chances to go on, that's what he does. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the just man falls seven times but rises again. Amen. Amen, amen. You ever fallen in life? Yep. Stumble, fail, yeah. Spiritually speaking, just get up, dust yourself off and keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep serving God. Ask God to forgive you and just keep moving forward. Convince those. And then just simply... And if some have compassion, making a difference. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Father, I pray that you would take this message. That, Father, you would impact hearts with it today. Father, I pray that the Spirit of God would move through this church. Father, as they begin the processes of seeking a new pastor to stand behind this pulpit, I ask God that you would unite them together. Father, keep at bay those that would want to destroy the church, those that would want to bring problems within the church. Father, just uh, allow there to be unity. Allow there to be cohesiveness as they move forward for the cause of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we love you. We're grateful for all that you do. Bless now in this invitation time. For it's in my name we pray. Amen.